Hey, welcome to the channel. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate you choosing to spend a couple minutes with me today. And I hope you will, because this is a really interesting topic that just might save your butt. I was having coffee recently with a bunch of old dudes, like I usually do, and one of them, a lawyer, was telling me about a recent trip he had made. He was on vacation, and he was boarding the plane to get back home. He's sitting in his seat. He's gazing out the window at the airplane at the next gate, and he sees what he perceives as a very worried pilot. He tells me that this pilot was walking around the airplane, looking at the wheels, looking at the engines, tugging on things, checking up in the wheel wells. He was really going over it, and he said, this guy must have been really worried about something. And I said, no, you just saw the walk around. It's a normal inspection. We do it for every flight. And by the way, this would be the perfect time to inspect the like button and get very aggressive with the subscription button so you can be a regular subscriber to this channel just like all the cool kids. Now back to our story. He was shocked. He had no idea pilots actually look at the airplane they're about to fly before they fly it. Now here's an interesting little tidbit. The walk around is a visual inspection. That's obvious, right? We're walking around and we're checking the oil level and we're looking at the airplane and making sure the pedo doesn't have a mud dauber in it or something. But the visual inspection is the most common maintenance task anybody ever does on an aircraft. And it doesn't have to be done by a mechanic. When you're a pilot and you're doing your walk around, you're participating in the maintenance process by doing a visual inspection with a pilot's eye. What's going on here? And does it all look like it's in the right place? Believe it or not, the visual inspection that you have a tendency to breeze through, and I say that because we're all susceptible to it, including myself, that visual inspection can be the difference between a really enjoyable flight and a white knuckle ride to the ground. No kidding. Here's the problem. Whether you're a mechanic or whether you're a pilot, you're a human being. And human beings are prone to complacency. We can get lazy. Especially when we're doing something we've done over and over and over again. We start seeing what we expect to see instead of really carefully looking to see anything's out of place, anything's amiss, something's wrong. We can kind of convince ourselves that this is just a perfunctory thing we do before we fly, but really it's all about going flying. It's really not. You want to take that inspection seriously. You may be doing your walk around for the 10,000th time, but find a way to force yourself to slow down, be vigilant, and really look at the details because it's the details that can get you. Just as pilots may forget a step on the checklist once in a while when they're doing it mentally, mechanics can miss something too. Of course, beyond just the human factor, we're flying a machine and that machine has a significant amount of vibration to it. Vibration can cause things to break or to loosen or to fall off entirely. And that's where we get into the real minutia of the visual inspection because we're not looking for a big dent from a bird strike, although we would definitely want to take note of that. We're also looking for little things. And I want to talk about this, safety wire. And let's include cotter pins. Way more important than the average person thinks. And that little piece of safety wire could be the difference between an enjoyable flight and a really early termination that you're not going to enjoy at all. Consider this real-world example. A buyer purchases an airplane that hasn't flown in a number of years and very wisely hires a mechanic to do a thorough annual inspection and correct all issues. Well, that's a good first step. After all the maintenance is completed, the paperwork is done, everything's in order, the pilot shows up to fly the airplane back home. Unfortunately, there's a piece of safety wire missing. That's all. One piece of safety wire. The pilot flies from the airport where he bought the airplane to the next airport down the road where he purchases fuel, then takes off to go home. Unfortunately, there is no safety wire on the fuel strainer bowl, which is at the bottom of the fuel system, and it has a thumb screw, which should be safety to keep that thumb screw from loosening up, backing out, and letting fuel just flow right out the fuel strainer, which is exactly what happened. As you can imagine, if fuel is flowing out of the fuel strainer, it's not making it through the system up to the cylinders. The engine stops running and the pilot has to make an off-airport landing, which causes substantial damage to the airplane. 
not a happy moment. Yes, that actually happened. This is a true story. That airplane really was damaged. It did come down out of the sky specifically because a single piece of safety wire was missing. That's not part of your normal pre-flight, but that is something to keep in mind. Whenever you see the cowling off the airplane you're flying, that's a great time to look in there, even if you're not a mechanic. Are there hoses that are chafing? Are there ADEL clamps that are broken? Are, are there cables or wires in there that are just flopping around loose that are gonna be affected by airflow? Anything in there that looks unusual warrants a discussion with a mechanic. Go say, hey, this doesn't look right to me. Does it look right to you? That's all part of your walk around. That's all part of visual inspections. And whether you're a mechanic or a pilot, you're the one who's going to be sitting in that airplane. So it would be wise to learn how to really look at the details. Here's another example. Real world actually happened. An individual buys an aircraft, flies at home, very happy. Everything's great. They settle down on the runway. Unfortunately, this airplane has a cast ring nose wheel and is steered by differential braking, left and right brakes independently. The right brake, the bolts were not safety. So during the flight, those bolts vibrated out. Remember, air buffeting is causing vibration even down on the wheels. Those bolts backed their way out, the brake assembly came off of the wheel, and when that aircraft touched down and the pilot touched the brakes, one brake worked, one didn't. So the aircraft leaves the runway, runs across the field, hits a fence, considerable damage. Luckily, nobody's hurt in either one of these accidents, but in both cases, the aircraft are substantially damaged at great expense, and it could have gotten even uglier. And yes, there have been fatal crashes specifically because a piece of safety wire or a cotter pin is missing. Speaking of cotter pins, take a look at this little clip. This is the cockpit of a 1940 J3 Cub I used to own. Absolutely wonderful airplane. It is a symphony of simplicity, but look at that nut right there holding those cables together. Those cables connect the stick to the aileron. And right there in the center, there's one bolt with one nut and one cotter pin that holds the whole thing together. Can you imagine if that cotter pin wasn't there and you never picked it up in your pre-flight inspections and one day that nut should vibrate off while you're flying and the bolt falls out, it puts you in the very unenviable position of rooting around on the floor of a flying airplane looking for a nut and a bolt to hopefully put those cables back together before you have an unfortunate impact with the ground. That's probably not going to work out great. And again, just a missing cotter pin can be all the difference. So when you do your walk around inspection, whether you're a brand new student pilot or you're an ATP with 25,000 hours, slow yourself down, take a real look at everything and make sure the safety wire is there. You don't have loose smoking rivets. There's not a tear in the fabric. There's not a dent in a primary flight control. All those little things that we could so easily just blow past because I expect to see the same thing I've seen every other time. Well, maybe it would be a good idea if we just took our time took a real close view and made sure all that safety wire and those cotter pins are where they're supposed to be. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and you got something out of it because I will tell you, if you fly long enough, someday you're going to find a nut that's not there. You're going to find a bolt that's loose. You're going to find a cotter pin or a piece of safety wire that is broken or missing. And boy, are you going to be glad when you get that fixed before you go because nobody needs that kind of excitement in their life. We'll see you next time right back here at Mad Props Arrow.